The informed American harbors few illusions as to the nature of full-scale nuclear war. He knows the combatants would attempt to deliver warheads by any and every means at hand. Regardless of technical developments in other spheres, the great open highway of the atmosphere would be used as an avenue of attack. Potential enemies already possess large, efficient bomber forces, which could lay waste the United States unless repulsed by our defense. The airborne threat includes bombers capable of operating at any altitude between the surface and 60,000 feet and at speeds up to 1,300 knots. They would use electronic countermeasures to interfere with radar tracking, radio command systems, and defense systems. Some aircraft would carry thermonuclear bombs. Speed and altitude would allow bomb release points at a considerable distance from the target. Some aircraft would spread chaff, set up corridors of radar interference to conceal other bombers' approach. Others would release decoys to provide false targets. Other attacking aircraft would carry air-to-surface missiles with deadly warheads. As technical improvements increase the range of these missiles, defense measures will have to improve as well, always staying ahead of the current airborne threat. Defense against airborne threats boils down to protection of certain classes of targets our strategic air command bases and ICBM sites. A potential enemy must destroy these bases suddenly and completely. Otherwise, our retaliation would turn his action into a form of national suicide. An enemy's other objectives would include the key areas of government, coordination, and military command. Interceptor bases and defensive missile launching sites. Our great industrial concentration and centers of population. These considerations led inevitably to adoption of the area defense concept. Area defense requires powerful long-range forces at strategic locations, each force devoted not to the protection of points, but to the destruction of any raid that comes within its range. Thus, every target in the area gets the same full measure of protection. A comparatively limited number of such forces can deal with enemies approaching any or all of our vital areas. They set up a continuous perimeter far out over oceans, deserts, and north woods. Area defense aims at pushing the perimeter farther and farther out through continuous improvements of weapon systems and the electronic ground environment. Area defense capitalizes on all-round search radar coverage which leaves no openings for undetected approach of hostile raiders. Effective defense requires long-range detection and identification, followed up by immediate attack at the greatest possible range. In long-range battle, defensive and offensive nuclear warheads explode at safe distances from densely populated areas. Every raider downed at long range eliminates a cargo of bombs chaff, decoys, or air-to-surface missiles. To provide area defense with expendable interceptors, fully effective during any kind of weather, with a wide margin of performance superiority, United States Defense Forces set up requirements for the IM-99 weapon system, a combination of highly advanced Bomark missiles and missile bases designed to operate within the electronic ground environment of the SAGE system. SAGE receives early warning of hostile aircraft from many sources. The distant early warning line, the Mid-Canada and Pine Tree line, airborne early warning radar, and picket ships. Texas towers, automatic long-range inputs, heavy search radar, height finders and gap fillers supply data for defensive air battle. The information flashes to direction centers via telephone networks. 
When the responsible officer at SAGE wants a Bomark missile fired, he doesn't order someone at the base to fire it. He personally fires the missile. The Bomark responds automatically, without the need of last minute preparation. The SAGE computer supplies flight programs to any number of missiles within a few seconds. The Bomark A requires only a 90 second automatic warm up. The Bomark B requires none. The Bomark is designed to function as a member of the U.S. team of defensive weapons. The first increment of Bomark A bases is now combat ready. The Bomark B system will be operational beginning in 1961. Joint U.S. and Canadian Air Defense Forces have cooperated in the following visualization of possible future operations against airborne attack. up the miles between the continents. outage all evening, and that was this one here to command post. It's back in now, and everything's okay. Uh, fine. Any movement about the pole tonight? Nothing, not a thing. No tracks up there at all. I want to hit the rack. Well, oh, okay, wait to see it. Okay, good night. Hi, Foggy. Good evening. What you got for me now? In the NORAD area, the basic uh, big weather areas are in the northwest. Small storm up off the British Columbia coast. Uh, fog and stratus from the southeast all the way up the coast. Uh, most of it being north of New York, uh, going down to zero zero in places. Any questions on this? No, I believe not. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Hey, devoted. Did you see that Fox Delta One up there? Yes, sir. Check that out with sack and pack real quickly. All right. Give me the 64th Division. Uh, Major Roberts, this is Colonel Veach at NORAD headquarters. Uh, have you got a Foxtrot Delta One on your board? Uh, 30 aircraft, 40,000 feet, 500 knots. They, we have those. We have 60 now. You should be seeing the change on your board very soon. 60 Wait. aircraft? 60 aircraft. Located between uh, Iceland and Greenland. And that's been confirmed. There's no possibilities up there. They are genuine. Okay, let me know anything new on those real quickly, if you will. Roger. Colonel, I've just checked with TAC and SAC. They have nothing in the area. Let's get in the battle staff. Implement coca Cola.
high-speed threatening track coming in between Greenland and Iceland, as you can see there on the board. There's 60 aircraft in it going approximately 500 knots. The general sees the unknown aircraft as a threat. They can reach continental targets within five hours, but they have committed no hostile act. Drastic action um, is not yet justified. Has it been 60 from the beginning? No, sir. It started out as 30 and then it built up to 60 a few moments later. Mm -hmm. We called back. I checked with Strategic Air Command and TAC, MATS. No one has any possibilities of what these are. All disclaim any responsibility. Yes, sir. High pr probability. I would say a very high probability, sir. I feel that we should get in touch with our chiefs. Tell them we're going to increase state of readiness up to, I'd say, at least two forthwith. What does operation think? I would advise that, sir. Should we do that, Ryan? Yes, obviously, with that build-up, we should take immediate action, Chief. Let's get our chiefs now. Um, you get our Canadian chiefs, I'll get the U.S. chiefs. And tell them that we're doing it unless they direct us otherwise, right? Thank you. Can we line one one, please? General Cuter? So the 64th Norad Division reported a merchant ship uh, visually sighted many contrails approximately 250 miles east of the southern tip of Greenland. They sighted these through broken clouds. The course is south, which is fairly certain. The exact number of the objects, however, is uncertain at this time. We're going to plot these tracks as Foxtrot Delta 1 until we get something more reliable, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Syracuse. Mo, that Yogg Golf 
the track, and the old early warning board there is splitting. That's what that Juliet 092 is. Yes, sir. With the first 20 attackers on the screen, the division commander and his staff set up weapon allocations to be fed into the computer as basic data for operations during the coming battle. Then use your bow marks on it and authorize a one-to-one -one commitment. If you need more, use those in Bangor and we'll preserve those at Suffolk and South to the, to the track. If we're right, they're going south. That's right. Now, you've got 20 aircraft on cap from Otis. That should clean them. That should clean the track up, yes. Be sure Nike is ready. Okay. The air surveillance officer of the Boston Direction Center interprets data on the incoming raid. Sir, this is the ASO. I'm getting a jamming strobe from Mike 102 and from the AEW, crossing at Hotel Juliet, Lima Kilo, 5015. I assume that to be the position of Juliet 092. Looks like they are heading 260, speed about 500 knots. The track automatically goes to a weapons director for action. Scramble heading 045, scramble heading 045. WD-2? WD-2, this is the senior weapons director. On track, Juliet 9 or 2 It's a jamming formation. Scramble up to 20 bow marks. Roger, 20 bow marks. Hostile position, 400 miles out. Intercept point. For bow mark, 280 miles out. For combat air patrol, 210 miles out. Against this jamming formation, the computer recommends immediate attack with bow marks. He will fire bow marks against computed aiming points and maneuver the combat air patrol into position to mop up. I can do that with flights of four, 30 second intervals. Uh, Roger. Activate. minutes later, the intercept director assigned to monitor the first four bow marks sees their tracks moving into the raid area. His technician cuts in on voice radio frequency. The air surveillance officer watches jamming decrease as he switches from one radar input to the next. Now he sees what he's looking for. A Texas tower penetrates jamming. Sir, this is the ASO. We've resolved Juliet 092 into seven separate tracks. I'd like to drop Juliet 092 and initiate on live data. The weapons room now gets data sufficient to direct manned aircraft to intercept points. Against tracks Juliet 093 and Juliet 094. Roger, we're splitting manned interceptors for CAP flight to two. Release. Splitting. Kilo, November, zero, eight. Interception pairing. Interception pairing. Flight size two. Flight size two. Scramble heading zero four five. Scramble heading zero four five. Splitting two more. more. 
Intercept deck 2-1 reports flash on Juliet 093 and Juliet 094. The sector commander watches the high altitude raid disappear. But with heavy raids over Canada and 50 hostiles somewhere to the east, he knows the battle has scarcely opened. There may be some low levels coming through there that haven't shown, so let's be alert to them. Senior Director? Sir, this is the ASO. All jamming has disappeared, and I now have low altitude returns. The Senior Director's scope display shows that Bomarks, to meet the low attack, are being launched from the Bangor sector. Senior Director? Boston sector commander watches the effect of the Bomark action. It looks like all those targets in that raid to the east have been gotten. Let's see that tactical action to the north. Events to the east of Boston constitute one small phase of a battle mounting swiftly in scope and intensity. No matter how the battle goes in space, on the ground, or under the sea, these men have one mission and one duty. To find, fight, and destroy invaders using the atmosphere as their avenue of attack. Using every weapon, every resource of skill, experience, and science. The Bomark is one of the powerful weapons developed to strengthen their hands against the day when airborne attack might bring on the crisis of our national survival. <laughs> 